What's up guys? Um, Shout here. I wanted to make a video. This is something I've been thinking about for a while. Um, there is a page on the Flesh and Blood website. If you go under game, if you go to rules and policy center and you scroll down to the bottom, you will find the rules advisory exam. Uh, now this is a 50 question quiz. Um, asking you about general interactions in the game, um, in the few armory events that I've played, Flesh and Blood can be a relatively confusing game. While the rules are easy to understand, you get into some pretty comprehensive, uh, thick interactions that can cause confusion. Um, so for this video, uh, we are going to take this exam together. If you want to take the exam before watching this video to see how well you do, you can just go to the Flesh and Blood website, go to the Rules and Policy section, scroll down to the Rules Advisory exam. This is just a 50 question exam. There's no certification to be a judge at this point, although I'm sure Legend Story Studios is looking to the future to figure out how to do that. But enough talking. I say uh, let's get into it. So we'll click this. All right. Can you pitch more than one card per turn? Yes, as long as there is a cost to pay. So that's something that a lot of people have issues with. Um, you can't just pitch your entire hand. That would let you draw back up. You know, if you just wanted to filter your hand as much as possible. You cannot do that in Flesh and Blood. You have to have a cost that needs to be paid before you can pitch a card. A lot of people will pitch their card first and then play a card. Generally, I think in the highest level of play, you play your card first, and then you pay for it. But this first question, yes, you can, as long as there are costs to pay. Is pitching a card considered discarding? That is a hard no, and that plays into some hero's mechanics. Reinar, for example, um, intimidates during your action phase. If you discard a card with six or more attack, you cannot just pitch cards with six or more attack and and to get intimidate triggers pitching is different than discarding okay if i use katsu's hero hero ability and don't play the banish card what happens to it it remains banished until the end of the game so the banish is the banish zone is much like uh, exile in magic the gathering where the graveyard uh, possibly in the future, can be interacted with. You can interact with the graveyard in Flesh and Blood with cards like Remembrance. Uh, but once a card is banished, it is out of the game for the rest of the time that you're playing. And because Flesh and Blood is a one-of format, um, it's gone for the game that you have with your opponent. Okay, question number four. I attack with Anothos, pitching Raging Onslaught Blue. During the reaction step, I play Pummel Red, pitching Disable Blue. What is Anothos' power? The power is going to be 10 because Anothos's power becomes 6 when its static ability condition has been met. So Anothos checks the pitch zone continuously. Um, it is not a when you declare an attack with this weapon, if you have so and so in your pitch zone. So the power will be 10, it will be 6 from its own power, plus 4 from the pummel ability. Red pummel is brutal. Does it cost an action point to play an attack reaction? No, it does not, because reactions do not cost action points. Reactions are much like combat tricks. During the combat phase, if you declare an attack, your opponent declares their blocks, it passes back to you. You do not need action points to play your attack reactions. Okay, next question. Does it cost an action point to play Time Snap Potion from your hand onto the arena? That is a yes, because potions are generic actions items. That is their three keywords that go along with it. And to play an item onto the arena, onto the battlefield, it costs an action. That's why that's the give and take with potions. Next question. Can you take notes about the cards you or your opponents have pitched? No. Um, so that is a ruling from Legend Story Studios. That is one of the few things, you know, that we'll find out in this quiz that isn't fully comprehensive uh, because you would maybe just assume that you can take notes about what's in your opponent's hand, what's uh, 
what your opponent's pitching, you know, to really... Because some decks don't shuffle. Some classes, some hero classes, have cards that let you shuffle your deck. So the pitch order doesn't matter as much. But for classes that do not shuffle, if you wrote down all your opponent's pitch, uh, the pitch order, you would eventually know at a certain point what they're going to draw exactly. You could count their cards. Now, there's a mental game that you can play. If you're, you know, Rain Man, you can keep track of your opponent's uh, number of cards in deck, pitch order, how many cards they're playing a turn, and so on. But sitting at the table, the only thing you're allowed to write down in Flesh and Blood are health totals. Okay, next question. If you play Nimbleism Red, then activate Heart and Cross Strap and play Pack Hunt, will Pack Hunt gain plus three power from Nimbleism's effect? I am going to say no. Now, I've taken this test uh, about two months ago, I would say, and I have terrible memory, so I'm going to say no. Uh, I'm going to say that Nimbleism looks at the printed cost of the card, but we will go over the results at the end. Hopefully, we're 50 for 50. Last time, I believe I was 48 out of 50. Uh, but no, I believe that Nimbleism looks at the printed cost on the card. Next question. If you guys are at home watching this video raging at me because that's wrong, we'll find out together. Okay, next question. Can you activate Hope Merchant's Hood before deciding how to defend? That is a yes, because Hope Merchant's Hood is an instant ability. And you are allowed to activate instants anytime you have priority. Which is, after your opponent attacks... Priority passes to you as the defender to choose what cards you want to defend with. Hope Merchant's Hood is an underrated card in my opinion. Although there are a lot of other good helms, that's a great part about Flesh and Blood, is the um, the vast array of equipment that you get to choose from. Okay. I control tectonic plating with no minus one counters on it. How many times can I defend with it during the same combat chain? So this is the same combat chain. So that's going to be once. So a combat chain is basically when your opponent plays an attack card, the combat chain continues until they play a non-attack card. So even if, let's say, for example, your opponent is playing a ninja, if they use, uh, you know, flying kick into um, whirling... A uh, surging wave. I, I'm like blanking on all the ninja cards. Uh, Kung Fu Chop, you know? So as long as they keep playing attack cards, that is considered a combat chain. And once you declare a piece of equipment to defend in a combat chain, it is stuck in that chain. Now, if your opponent plays a, a non-attack action, you know, say they're playing warrior and they swing in with their sword and then they play sharpened steel after the first attack, that resets the combat chain. So you would be able to defend with the same piece of equipment after your opponent has played sharpened steel and declares another attack, but as long as they are continuously linking the chain, chain links, you know, you will not be able to defend. So the answer to that is once. Next question. I control Forge for War in Goliath Gauntlet. My opponent attacks me and I defend with Goliath Gauntlet. After chain link resolution, they close the combat chain. Later the same turn, they open a new combat chain and attack, uh, attack me again. Can I defend with Goliath Gauntlet again? Yes. So this is the, uh, basically the other side of this last question. You know, after chain link resolution, they close the combat chain. Later they attack again. Yes, you can. Although Goliath Gauntlets has zero defense. So I, <laughs> I don't know why you're just throwing it up in against attacks, you know? Give the gauntlet a break. If I play Slogism, then Regurgitating Slog, will I be able to banish the Slogism as an additional cost to give Regurgitating Slog Dominate? Yes. Non-attack action cards go to the graveyard when they resolve. So they're not associated with any other cards. You are playing them, the card resolves, it goes to the graveyard, then you can play your next card. So yes, you can. Uh, regurgitating Slog, Fantastic limited card. Just throwing that out there. At the end of the first turn of the game, who gets to draw cards up to their hero's intellect? All players. So that is one of the best parts about Flesh and Blood. One of the most nuanced parts, in my opinion, is the fact that both players get to draw up at the end of the first turn, which definitely puts uh, deciding who goes first in the matchup 
on its head. In almost every other trading card game, it is kind of um, known amongst all the players that going first, being on the play, is always better than being on the draw. But in Flesh and Blood, because both players draw up, and going second lets you attack in without fear of your opponent just drawing back up, it gives it a lot more nuance. So the question, the answer to that question is both players, or all four players, if you're playing Ultimate Pit Fighter, get to draw up. Now guys, this is a 50 question quiz, so this video may be a little bit long. Thank you for sticking around with me. Can you swap a card in your arsenal with a different card in your hand? That is a no. And that is another thing that newer players and more experienced players will learn as they play Flesh and Blood, is that you do not want to just throw anything in the arsenal. Because if you throw a card into the arsenal that is difficult to activate, it could end up getting stuck there. And that is a feels bad situation because the arsenal is a very crucial part of the game. Because it's essentially your fifth card and you do not want to get it stuck up with something that is um, lower quality or low impact, I should say. At the end of your turn, if your arsenal is empty and you have a card in your hand, do you have to put the card in your arsenal? That is a no. Uh, putting a card in your op uh, arsenal is optional. And sometimes, if you're looking at a blue pitch card, a card that you do not necessarily want to play and are more inclined to pitch, you want to save that card in your hand because just throwing a, a low-quality blue card into your arsenal just to draw up four cards is a trap. And it's one that... You will have to learn personally. You'll learn what cards in your deck are worth throwing in the arsenal, but it is optional to put a card in your arsenal. Can remember and shuffle equipment back into your deck? Nope. Uh, reading the card helps you understand the card, it turns out, because re remembrance can only target action cards. Equipments are not actions, therefore remembrance cannot target equipments. I do appreciate people who put equipment into the graveyard, though, more people should do that, but I am okay with just flipping it upside down. Uh, I'm not going to freak out that much. Does Awakening Bellow increase the power of a Romping Club attack? Okay, so this is one that thankfully the answer fills in the context clue for you. Um, because I often uh, mix up Awakening Bellow and uh, Primeval Bellow. So I'm pretty sure Awakening Bellow is the one that says Brute Attack Action Cards. So I'm going to go with No this time because the next question is going to be the inverse, right? So the next question is, does Primeval Bellow increase the power of a Romping Club attack? The answer is yes, because Primeval Bellow increases the power of any Brute attack, and the Romping Club is a Brute card, right? So that is a question that I hear a lot of new players kind of bring up. If a card says, your next uh, Brute attack does X more damage, it does not have to be an attack action card. It can be your club. But that is also why Awakening Bellow, I think, is a slightly stronger card because it has that restriction. Okay. If I draft five copies of Scar for Scar Red, uh, that's that's a good draft. How many can I include in my draft deck? Up to five. The One of the cool things about Limited is you are basically allowed to use everything you get um, inside the class restriction, right? So you can't play ninja cards in your Guardian deck, but you can use multiple copies of the same generic more than would be allowed based on the format limitations right so you can only have two of a card in blitz you can only have three of a card in classic constructed but in limited if you are blessed by the limited gods and you end up with five copies of red scar for a scar you should play them you're probably going to win that draft too um or that sealed event what is the recommended time limit for a sealed deck or booster draft Best of one match. That's going to be 30 minutes. In my opinion, I wish it was 40 minutes. Um, especially in the first couple of years of the game. I know that's a weird... It's hard to kind of nail that down. I think 40 minutes is more fair. Because some decks are grindier. I understand Legend Story Studios mentality. Deciding on it being a very tense back and forth. But 30 minutes seems very short in a lot of situations. Just go up against a merchant player. And let me know how 30 minutes does you. Uh, what is the recommended time limit for a best of one constructed match? That's going to be 50 minutes, right? Um, see, this says constructed match. 
And there's a bit of a switch up here because Classic Constructed is 50 minutes and Blitz is 30 minutes. So this could be a tricky trick question. Uh, they're asking, what is the recommended time limit for a best of one constructed match? Blitz is a constructed format, but has a 30 minute limit. Um, so I'm hoping that they mean Classic Constructed with the use of this word. This is my context clues. Um, so we're going to go with 50 minutes. And if this is the one question I get wrong, um, I'm going to feel, I'm going to be salty. I'm going to be a salty boy. When defending against an attack with Dominate, which one of these statements is true for the defending player? They can defend with one card from hand during the defense step, plus one defense reaction from hand during the reaction step. That's a big no-no. So it's going to be this one, because you can defend with one card from hand by Dominate's effect, right? And even a defense reaction from hand is considered a defending card. It's still played from hand. Therefore, against Dominate, you can only defend with one card from hand, and then hopefully you have a defense reaction in your arsenal. Otherwise, you're probably playing Mechanologist, and you're going to lose to Bravo. Okay, how does Anothos work? If you have two or more cards in your pitch zone with cost three or greater, it gains plus two power. And if you have two or more cards in your pitch zone with pitch value three, it gains plus two power. This is one of the questions I got wrong the first time. I think it was like three in the morning and I was just reading through these questions quickly. And I believe I selected this. Um, so Anothos and a lot of other Guardian cards are based off the card that your pitching's cost and not its pitch value, right? So it could be a red pitch card with cost of four and that will trigger Anothos's ability. So I'm gonna click this. This is the wrong answer. At least I am 95% sure. Otherwise, I'm going to look stupid. But that is a common occurrence. So, you are playing Dorinthia. You pitch red, 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 and spend your only action point to attack with Dawnblade. The attack hits. Which of these statements is true? You can attack again because Dorinthia's hero effect says you can attack an additional time. You can't attack again because you don't have an action point to pay the cost of attacking additional time with Dawnblade. This is a an issue that a ton of new players run into when they're deciding to try Warrior, because Dorinthia says you can swing with your sword a second time if you hit. But all that effect really does is remove the limitation on Dawnblade that says once per turn attack, which is why a lot of Warrior cards, especially Warrior's Valor and Spoils of War, you're trying to get go again in Warrior. That's why Flock of the Featherwalkers, Refraction Bolters, a lot of these cards that give you go again are the bread and butter of Warrior because even if you hit with your weapon, if you do not have an action point, you cannot attack again. That's why Refraction Bolters is one of the best pair of boots in the game. Next question. You have Unmovable in your hand. Which of these are legal? You can defend with Unmovable for free during the defense step or pay resource, 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 to play unmovable during the reaction step. No, you can only defend with unmovable during the reaction step and you must pay its cost to play it, right? So the game would be busted wide open if you could just defend with defense reactions for free, right? You could use staunch response to just block out six damage or steel blade shunt to block for six and deal one damage. Defense reactions, are different in the fact that you have to pay their cost always, which is why Sink Below and Springboard Somersault are fantastic cards because they cost zero. Next question. If you did not defend it, okay. If you did not defend during the defense step, can you still play a defense reaction during the reaction step? Yes, you can. So you can play a defense reaction regardless of whether you defended during the defense step or not if you did or if you did not defend it, right? Because you, your opponent attacks, you can pass on your opportunity to defend with hand and equipment. Your opponent gets the opportunity to play attack reactions. They pass back to you. That is your opportunity to play defense reactions. And then you go back and forth on reactions until both players pass priority. If I play an attack reaction and pass priority, then my opponent passes priority can I play another attack reaction? Yes. See, this is where things can get a little confusing too. Because if you say I pass, 
and then your opponent passes. Let's reread this before I sound super dumb. So if I play an attack reaction and pass priority, then my opponent passes priority. Okay, see, this is where I'm messing up. See, you, you play an attack reaction, and then you pass it to your opponent to play their defense reaction, right? So your opponent would say, I pass, and then it would come back to you again to where you could play an, another attack reaction. It goes back and forth. Um, I'll just read this out because I'm just going on and on at this point. Yes, the reaction step ends when both players pass priority uh, when there are no layers waiting to resolve. When you play the attack reaction, both yourself and the defending player have to pass for the attack reaction to resolve. After the attack reaction resolves, the attacking player gets priority, which is when you could play another attack reaction if you wish. So basically, you move towards damage calculation once both players have passed and there's no cards that need to be resolved. So this is where it's good to take this test. It's good to learn these rules because when you're in a tournament situation or when you're at an armory, it's always better to know the rules and the limitations so you're not taken advantage of or people make mistakes sometimes just by accident. It happens. I think we're about halfway there, folks. When an equipment is destroyed, does it go to the graveyard? Yes. Um, so it can be turned face down. You know, I think that most people are okay with that. But generally, it is supposed to go to the graveyard. Is it okay to turn destroyed equipment face down instead of putting it in the graveyard? Yes, if all players are happy with this, okay? So this is something that you can politely tell your opponent, hey, um, it's actually um, the rules that a card should go to the graveyard if it's destroyed, but I don't mind if we put it face down. But just letting you know in case you're ever in a road to nationals or a, you know, a more prestigious event, it's better to put your stuff in the graveyard. But don't ever be rude about things like this and say, hey, you total noob, you're an idiot. Why the hell are you flipping that card face down? You're dumb. No, that's unacceptable. Next question. What happens if a player runs out of cards in their deck? Well, we call that running out of gas in the tank. Nothing happens. Play continues, but you don't have cards to pay for any of your abilities, okay? So unless your opponent is also out of cards, they're going to play their cards of which you have none to defend against. So now your opponent is just going to take you to Pound Town. And uh, so honestly, if you get to no cards in your deck, it might be worth scooping it up. Next question. What happens if both players run out of cards in their deck? Okay, so this is just the logical progression. Um, the game results in a double loss. That's painful. Losses, uh, well, double losses, Kind of, I imagine that's the same thing as a uh, timeout in this game, where if you run out of time, uh, those are incredibly punishing in flesh and blood. Sometimes it is better to play reckless and go for the win instead of try and grind your opponent out if you know that there's no win in sight and the clock is ticking down. When can you play an instant? Bup, bup, any time during either player's action phase. Okay. So it doesn't have to be your own action phase. I wish they would word this different. I wish they would say, um, I guess you can play it during any time during the opponent's turn, but uh, I, I wish it would be like when you have priority, but I imagine there are times when you just want to slam down a sigil of solace. But to answer this question, this is more in the sense of you can play it on your opponent's turn and not just your own action phase, okay? So you can play it on your opponent's turn. Um instance can be used anytime can you play an instant during the reaction step yes if you have priority right um so i hope i'm getting this question right i could be getting this one wrong this is why i'm glad i'm taking this test with you guys but i think this is the situation where you know say you're playing against a warrior and they're pumping up their attack they just use stroke of foresight it passes to you to play defense reactions I'm fairly certain that you can play a Sigil of Solace at that point to gain life, but we will see at the end of the at the end of the quiz. Um, so I'm gonna say yes now. Can I play or activate a non-attack action during a combat chain such as Nimbleism or Heart and Cross Trap? No. 
Uh, so during a combat chain, the only type of action that can be played are attack actions. Wait, can I play or activate a non-attack action during a combat chain? No, so this would break the combat chain, right? So as long as it's not in the middle of a chain link, which you cannot activate actions during the middle of a chain link, but I'm pretty sure this is what would close the combat chain, which is like in relation to the question asked earlier. So, you know, that was regarding being able to block with equipment. So I think that no, the only type of action that can be played, activated on a combat chain are attack actions. Otherwise, it closes the chain. Which of these statements is true? I can have three head jab blue and three head jab yellow in my deck. I can have three head jab blue or three head jab yellow in my deck. Oh, okay, and. So it's and. I was like, these are the exact same question. My reading comprehension is uh is bad. It's not good. So this is saying. This is talking about a classic constructed where you can have three of each card. This is saying that each pitch value is a different card, right? So classic constructed says you can have three of a card, but this question and the rules overall state that head jab blue and head jab yellow are different cards entirely. They're not talking strictly about head jab. There's also the pitch variant um, that makes it a different card. When can you pitch a card? Only when there is a cost to play. You cannot pitch a card willy-nilly for no reason. There has to be a cost associated with it. If you have a red card, pitch R, and a blue card, pitch resource, 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 R, 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 in your hand and you declare you are attacking with a Nothos, can you choose to pitch the red card first and then the blue card? Yes. So this is sequencing. This is something that Guardian players, I think, more so than other classes can kind of learn. This is a good way to filter your hand and one of the legal ways that you can. So you can choose to say, oh, I have this three cost. I'm going to pay one. Now I need to pay two more and I'll use a blue. So you'll be left over with one. You could have just paid with the blue, but you are allowed to choose which cards you pitch to pay the cost. So that's something to keep in mind when it comes to Anothos. If you have multiple cards in your pitch zone, can you choose the order that they go on the bottom of your deck? Yes. This is a higher level of play um, because the ones that you put before, you know, like if you stack them up, the ones that are higher in your deck, you're going to draw those first. So if there's a really high value card, you're going to want to draw that again as soon as possible. So you're going to want to put that one closer up in your deck. That way you will draw it quicker because it's hard to keep track. You're not always going to be drawing four cards at the end of your turn. Optimally, you would want to, but sometimes you're maybe going to have one or two cards in your hand, and you're only going to be drawing one or two cards at the end of your turn. When you put multiple cards from your pitch zone on the bottom of your deck, does your opponent get to see the order you put them in? Yes. Cards in a pitch zone are public information until they move into a hidden zone, including the order which they moved into that zone. So this is something that like you you kind of want to pay attention. You can ask your opponent what order are you putting those cards back in, but as soon as the the deck hits the playmat, hits the uh the board, the game state again, you're not allowed to access that information anymore. So this is where paying attention goes a long way and it's also another reason why you cannot write stuff down because that is critical information. If I don't have a card in hand to discard for Wreck or Romp's additional cost, can I still play it? No, additional cost must be paid to play a card. That's the same thing with Flock of the Feather Walkers and any card that says, as an additional cost to play this card, X. I believe Demolition Crew is another one. Um, you have to have the other cost, you have to pay it in order to play the card. I attack with Dawnblade, and the defending player defends with one card from their hand. I play Route, returning the defending card to their hand. If I now play another card with Reprise, will I get the Reprise effect? I believe so, because the game state remembers that the defending hero has defended with a card from their hand this chain link. So this is one of the few questions where I am not one million thousand percent sure, but I would feel comfortable letting my opponent 
go ahead with this. That's the kind of that's the kind of way you want to ask yourself about these rulings. My dog is behind the gate right now, losing her mind. Um, she's a good girl, though. You want to ask yourself, would I let my opponent do this to me? When you're thinking about if you're sure enough with a ruling, I would be comfortable with the reprise triggering for my opponent's card because that's how I think the game state works. So I'm going to say yes, but we will find out. You have done a booster draft and unfortunately only have 26 cards that can be legally included in your deck. What happens? You are playing four cracked bobbles, which have no effect other than pitching for two. They have no defense value. They are just yellow pitch cards. Good luck with that, friend. You are playing an armory event, sealed deck tournament. Can you change the hero you are playing between rounds? Yes, as long as there was no card pool registration during deck construction. So this is another thing that I think a lot of players don't know. If you're doing these um, relatively low stakes, and I wouldn't call armory low stakes, sometimes there's very valuable cards on the line. As long as there is no card pool registration involved, you can switch up your deck. I believe it's the same It's the same thing with limited to where you can switch out your deck. This is another question that I am relative, like relatively sure on, but again, I could be wrong, and I think we're getting towards the end of the quiz. Again, thank you guys for sticking with me. If I defend with Barkbone Strapping that has one defense and decide to activate its effect during the reaction window, the activation cost is destroy Barkbone Strapping. Will Barkbone Strapping prevent one damage during calculation? No, if a card leaves a chain link before the damage calculation status, its defense value will not be applied to damage calculation. Um, see, I didn't think... This makes me think I was wrong about another question before because they're saying that they have declared to block with Barkbone Strapping and then decide to activate its effect during the reaction window, which I don't think you can. Um, I could be wrong, but I'm going to say no on this question. I could end up doing worse on this test now than I did two months ago. So no, if a card leaves the chain link before damage calculation step, its defense value will not be applied. It's kind of the same thing with route, where if your opponent blocks for three with a card and you route it back into their hand, that card is no longer giving its defense to this uh, damage calculation. You are playing a sealed deck tournament. How do you get the hero and weapon cards for your deck? Um, so you should be able to add them. The store, it's kind of like lands in Magic the Gathering, where whatever store you're playing at should have those cards available to you. You can also go, also ask around uh, the tables where people are building their decks because it's very likely that someone opened up one of the tokens you need and is not playing them. People will make sure that you get your tokens. If a card with Go Again gains an additional instance of Go Again, how many action points do you gain when the card resolves? One, because Go Again does not stack. Can I play with more cards than the minimum deck size? Yes. Um, so you can play with more than the minimum, but you can't play with more than the maximum. So Blitz, for example, is a 40 card maximum deck size so you have to play with 40 in blitz but in limited and in classic constructed um the number is a minimum and i honestly advise playing with more than 30 cards in limited events if you have the card quality and you feel comfortable doing so all right two more questions i want to play flock of the feather walkers can i pitch the same card i revealed for the additional cost no because you pitch like first you know you have to pay the cost before the card effect the card effect activates no the resource cost of the card is paid first then additional costs are paid if you pitch the card it will no longer be in your hand and finally i play hurricane technique after rising knee thrust and it hits returning to my hand if i play hurricane technique again will it get the combo effect no because the game state remembers that the last attack this combat chain was hurricane technique. Therefore, the combo requirement was not met. Let's submit. All right, if you score. 49 out of 49, boys. Clean. Let's go. Green checks. I like it. There were a couple of questions there. 
that I wasn't 100% sure on, right? And it's been about two, two and a half months since I've taken this test. It's good to know that I got the questions that I got wrong right this time. So there's some improvement there. But that's it, guys. Um, watch this video. Take this test if you want to. Uh, I recommend you tell people about it. If you have new players that come to your uh, your gaming store or you're learning with your friends or you get into a conversation with somebody while you're playing a skirmish, um, tell them about this test. It is better for the entire community to be more educated on rulings. Uh, it leads to less feel-bad moments. It leads to less times where people feel like they're being taken advantage of. And it's just, it's a good time. I had a good time making this video. I feel good, 49 out of 49. I'm going to watch Kong vs. Godzilla. I hope everyone has a great night. I hope everyone's safe. I hope you guys win prizes from your skirmish competitions. And I will see you guys in the next video.